Torrejos and I work as a teacher at German European School Manila. Pursuing teaching as a profession was serendipity. I was inspired by one of my teachers when I was in elementary. There is this sense of fulfillment when I can influence the positive changes I see in their lives. I think the pandemic has affected my job as a teacher. I have to make a lot of adjustments which we didn't expect. And suddenly, we were pressured to go out of your comfort zone, which is the four corners of the classroom, and do things you've never expected to have done in the past. It is so hard to make a great connection to my students without being physically present beside them. Hindi ka sigurado kung naintindihan ng mga bata ang kanilang mga lessons. Where I'm from, not all are able to do virtual classes, and so this will really make this will really be difficult for us as teachers hindi po ako maalam sa computer hindi po ako maalam sa ibang mga platforms so kailangan namin matuto ng mga different apps at different softwares para magawa namin ito marami po ako mga pinanood ng mga webinars isa na po dito yung webinar ng Canva ang Canva ang gumagabay sa akin upang lalo ako maging malikhain it is a tool which has all that I need that helps me create beautiful designs in the shortest time possible. There are lots of animated features, stickers, and it made my lesson presentation more exciting. There's just limitless possibilities. The templates, there's always something new to match what you need. A fun way to create lessons. Halos nilalaro ko lang siya. Ginagamit ko siya ng paiba-iba at kung ano po yung uh, effective kapag kakailanganin kong gumawa ng mga instructional materials lesson plans, activities, mga presentations at short videos ay meron akong Canva na masasandalan It has changed the idea that you cannot teach properly if you're outside the classroom You can! With the help of visually appealing designs, with the help of engaging designs Kung sakaling ma-invite ko na ang mga bata sa Canva class i-encourage ko silang Mag-explore. I can do collaborative activities for my students using it. The students really feel like kasama pa rin nila yung mga teachers nila, tuwang-tuwa yung mga bata. Canva is absolutely making my job easier. It has helped me now and I think it will help me even more in the future. Sa pagiging miyembro ko ng Canva for Filipino Teachers ay ipinakilala ko sa aking mga kapwa guro upang pasukin din nila ito. I would still be using Canva even when students are allowed back into their physical classrooms. I would still be using Canva for years to come and I would still be using it for the same things that I use it now. Para ma-excite silang pumasok sa araw-araw. They will love it. I would definitely recommend Canva to all my co-teachers and all the other teachers I know. It is truly a gift because hindi mo hiningi binigay sa'yo. Alam ko na ang Canva ay magiging malaking parte ng inyong buhay. Hello sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon Sir Jello. Magandang hapon sa so, teachers. Okay. Uh, kami muna po ano ang kasama niyo ngayon sa araw na to. Okay. Uh, wala po ang aming mga ibang mga co-administrators. May mga iba pong syempre mga ibang ginagawa no? Okay. And uh, we're ano no, we're glad okay, to uh, to be here we be with he, uh, with you here today. Okay? <laughs> Kasi teachers uh, si Sir Jello no, ang sama po ng panahon ngayon no. At nakaka ano nakaka Medyo nakakatakot na yung yung weather natin ngayon. So, I, I hope that everyone's safe. Okay, so magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sir Franco. Good afternoon sa lahat. And I'm very excited, Sir Franco. Video pa lang, yeah. na-excite na talaga. <laughs> <laughs> And then, knowing the the possibilities. Wow. So, this will be yeah. really a treat for our teachers. For our teachers, totoo, no? Yan. And as uh, Sir Jello, no, syempre, uh, marami naman talaga, kasi sikat na sikat na, no, ang canvas sa buong Pilipinas, actually sa buong mundo, no, okay? And uh, pag tingin naman, for example, pag pinang mo yung page nila, I think ang um, page following po, ang sa Facebook, no, if I'm not mistaken, sa around 1 million na yata yung page mm -hmm. followers nila, no, sobrang dami na na gumagamit saka alam yung canvas. So what we're offering to here today, no, is that a more contextualized um, ano, no, um, uh, training, no, and uh, session, okay? 
uh, sa mas pag-uusapan ngayon, hindi lang yung pag-create ng ng graphics, hindi lang pag-create ng uh, ng instra ng ano ng mga visually appealing uh, materials, okay? Uh, Nakakontextualize tayo ngayon sa education, okay? Ta- talagang itong Canva Philippines, no, Sir Jello, nakipag-meet pa talaga sa team natin, talagang nagplano sila, at itong ibibigay nila is like talagang, ano, um, uh, carefully designed session for the teachers. At hindi to like present, yeah. no, sa ibang, hindi na ibigay sa ibang sessions pa siguro, hindi ko alam, pero sabi nila talagang, ano to, dinesign nila to for the teachers, no. Um, so, oh. this is a highly contextualized session for our teachers, okay. So, yan, uh, Sir Jello, um, I think, no, um, we can start already, um, kasi medyo kanina pa naghihintay yung ating speaker, <laughs> no, and, um, siyempre tayo na siguro para ipakilala, pero Sir Jello, Bago ko ta bago ko ipakilala siguro ang speaker natin for today, okay? Gusto lang kitang interview ng konte. To what extent na nagamit mo si Canva? Saan sa mga saan mga bagay mo na nagamit itong Canva? Ah, uh, noong una nung I, I was exploring Canva, ah uh, usually I use it for designs, mga simpleng design na mga uh, not only for presentation pero talaga nung uh, for example doing posters, doing mga uh, infographic, mga ganun. But Recently, I'm exploring it, and then I found really very great uh, way for you to present using Canva. So, hindi lang paggawa ng present, but how you really present. And I think uh, looking at the uh, lineup that the uh, Canva Philippines have prepared for us, talagang very contextualized, ang sabi nga. And then, ang dami mo kasi pwedeng gawin. Eh. Hindi lang siya basta creating designs, eh. Napakadami. And as you try to explore, ako ang dami ko nandidiscover every day sa Canva. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to say that I'm looking forward to using Canva personally talaga sa klase. Yun ang ini-envision ko na ngayong ano, Correct. Yung, pasok ka na. So sa klase ko na siya gagawin. Hindi lang siya no, papagawa ko ng uh, uh, mga task, yung mga bata. You can use Canva. Pero ako mismo gagamitin ko na siya sa klase. So I'm very excited for this one. Yes, thank you, Sir uh, Sir Jello. I think Sir Jello, I I'm I'm looking at our chat now, and uh, there are a lot of requests uh, in terms of like uh, speaking in English. I think we also have know, yes. uh, um, <laughs> um, viewers from other countries right now. Okay, so um, Teacher Thomas, uh, Teacher uh, La Lailal uh, Jonas, okay, we'll try to uh, to accommodate you, you know. But uh, of course, also please do us uh, a favor of uh, uh, do like uh, pardon us, no, because we also are communicating with our uh, country um, uh, uh, fellow countrymen. That's why we're also speaking in uh, Filipino, okay. Uh, but that's that. I hope that we still find this session very meaningful, okay. So, um, so Jello, ako, ako naman personally, what I like about uh, Canva is the um, that it cuts off the time of uh, like uh, thinking on about graphic design. Because of much of much of their um, uh, designs are like drag and drop, uh, uh, as yeah. a drag and drop functionality. Okay, and for us teachers, that's a big thing because we know how how many time we're going to spend for assessments, for checking assessments, for creating unit plans, and this Canva makes us uh, allows us to create presentations without that much uh, spending that much time. Okay, in creating those presentations. Okay, so uh, Sir Jello, uh, it is my honor uh, to present to us today our um, guest speaker. We're supposed to have two today, but because of the be- busy schedule of uh, of the Canva Philippines team, no, because they are all over the country, they're giving trainings, they're um, con- continuously uh, improving the the assets of Canva. Okay, so. All of them are actually ano, no, occupied and still they were able to give us this session. But unfortunately, one of our speakers cannot uh, make it today. So we only have for today, uh, Sir Patrick Belliora, the, the Canva Learning Consultant. Okay, So Sir Patrick has a strong background okay, in learning and development. As one of Canva's uh, learning consultants, he works with stakeholders and leaders in understanding business problems, formulating learning solutions and strategies, and supporting performance and evaluating impact. Okay, so uh, Sir Jello, no, um, the our speaker for today is really in context of using Canva uh, in a much deeper sense. Now, let us all welcome into our stream, Sir Pat Billiora. Yeah, good afternoon, Sir Pat. Magandang hapon po. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon, Sir Franco yeah. and uh, Sir Angelo. It's nice to uh, always share with uh, teachers. No? So, uh, I may be working in the corporate realm, pero um, <laughs> it's always good to give back kasi 
Ako ay always see teachers, kaya tayo nandito dahil may teachers tayo. Eh. So, um, I am second to my parents, a product of my teachers. That's why it's always an honor to give back. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Sir Pat. No, and we're really looking forward to your session. Pero siguro, Sir <clears throat> Pat, before we start, okay, before we start your your wonderful session, okay, let uh, let us uh, first in um inform our audience. No, uh, we will have a um, question and answer after the first session. So we'll have, we'll take a short break after the first session, and then we'll continue after, and we'll have a full panel discussion towards the end. Okay, so if you have questions, do reserve your questions later on. Okay, so that uh, Sir Pat could ad address that later. Okay. And Sir Pat, maybe we could, before we begin, can you give us like a short overview of what's going to transpire in your session? What's your what are you going to give us today? Um, so we will be, and I'll be honest, we'll just be scratching the surface uh, because Canva as a tool um, is really expansive and very robust. Um, I'll give you some tips and tricks. Uh, I'll give you some of the stuff that probably you know, but. You know, it's it's good to, to use them in the context of uh, what did I learn when I was still in school studying teaching? Is it still applicable today? Some workplace realities as well that we uh, learned. You know? So I think one of the, the biggest challenges that we have, especially for the academia as a whole, was we were not prepared to move into the work from home, into uh, modules, into, on, into this. You know? So I guess for us, what we can bring to the table as an institution is we were doing this as part of our daily routine. So we will be sharing also uh, with what did we learn that can be applied in the academy. And at the same time, uh, we'll have, for some probably, they know this, but I have a surprise for everyone later on that hopefully uh, will make you happy, uh, a way of can but to further give back to the, to the community. So that part, I'm a bit excited. Nakaka-excite yan. Sir Pat, pasali yeah. rin kami ha. Uh, <laughs> pasali pasali ba kami dyan? <laughs> pasali oh, kami dyan. Oh, Competitive man. kami. Yes. Anyway, so Sir Pat, okay, we will not anymore uh, take uh, of your time. Okay, you can, uh, we can now maybe start our session. So Sir Pat, good luck uh, for your session. To our teachers, enjoy because you'll definitely learn a lot for today. Alright. So thank you, Sir Franco and Sir Angelo. See you later. All right, so uh, good afternoon again, uh, dear teachers, to those joining us from, um, I can see all over the country and all over the world. Um, magandang hapon, good afternoon, good morning, good night, wherever you are. So again, I am Patrick Villora, one of Canvas Learning Consultants. And uh, I, am a, I am not also far from the academe because I used to be part of the academe, not as part of K-12, but teaching um, college. Um, so for today, I'll be talking through um, Canva for Education, and uh, this is going to be a jam-packed jam um, afternoon. But before anything else, uh, let me uh, introduce what Canva is for some of you that might be asking, who are we? Uh, what is this all about? So Canva um, is an online design tool that primarily allows you to enable uh, enables you rather to create beautiful and engaging designs. Um, we have all types of users in mind when we created Canva. Um, that's why one of the flagship features really of Canva is we house thousands of templates to choose from. So Canva as a tool, personally, I call it as a zero skills assumption. And what do I mean by that? Canva assumes that the users may not have or very limited knowledge with design, um, but we want to cater to all walks of life. Now, the inspiration behind this was when our founder, uh, Melanie Perkins, was studying uh, college in, uh, in, the, in the university in Australia, part of what she was doing as a side hustle was to teach uh, uh, students how to use um, Photoshop and this is what she realized. Um, there is a complex way of creating a good design. So you purchase the software, you study how it works. You basically all go, go through all of these. And uh, it doesn't really guarantee that you'll turn out the best design. Um, why? Because if you are part of uh, the lucky group of people where I also belong, the not so artistic side, even if we all know the tool and how it works, it doesn't really guarantee that we'll be able to churn out 
you know, these designs that we want. So Mel said, all right, so there is a way for us to help. Um, and actually Canva wasn't the first thing that she created. She saw this opportunity when she was helping out with yearbooks. So she said there is an opportunity to create a software that would um, enable making yearbooks easier by using templates. And by doing so, what actually she did was she crunched it all the pre-process, and in one click, she created Canva as, as, as a tool where you can use templates, plug it in, and uh, in a matter of five minutes, three minutes, you would have a business card. You would have a presentation. Um, you would have whatever it is that you need designed. Um, that's what you know. That's what we set out to do as a company was to make it easier for you, uh, make it simple and at the same time integrated. Because yes, it is a mobile friendly app. So it is online. It's available for download a mobile, and the experience is seamless. You can start designing at home on your desktop, and then on the go. You can review the presentation that you did. You can still edit the presentation that you did. And then when you get to your school, open the presentation and whatever edit you did on your cell phone will already be reflected there. Um, and that, for you, dear teachers, what's in it for you? Um, for us in Canva, it's important for you to focus on the more important stuff. And that is what? And that is to teach. Okay. Um, now, one thing that is very important is we want to take away part of the work that you that you put in, you know, the grind that you put in into designing stuff and focus really on how to make your classes even better, how to make it more engaging. Imagine if you have to power your way through creating presentations the entire night. What energy would you have to give your students the following day, right? Um, because ultimately as a company, we want to empower the world to design, to empower everyone, including teachers, to design anything, for you to design anything that you need in class, publish anywhere as needed. Maybe it's in school, maybe online publishing on every device, a cell phone, um, laptops, um, handhelds, or whatnot, in every language. And later on, we'll see that um, with every ingredient. And we'll get through some of that later on. Now, I'll give you a bit of walkthrough of what Canva is and can do. Uh, but again, this is not all encompassing. We will just be scratching the surface, and I'll be giving you some tips and tricks along the way that you will see. Uh, please be on the lookout. Um, later on, I'll show you the link. And we would like to invite you over to join our uh, Canva, Canva for um, Education. Uh, or for Filipino teachers um, Facebook uh, group, because we have additional uh, resources for you there. Uh, but I'll give you a bit of walkthrough. The very first thing that you would have to do is to, excuse me, sign up for an account. So how does that work? Um, you can use your Facebook account. I mean, if, if you have a Google account, any email address, or for iOS users, you can sign up using your Apple, Apple ID. Okay, so once you go to canva.com, you can um, sign up. And then actually the process is very, very um, easy and simple. So as soon as you go through um, the sign up process, um, you will be immediately brought to the home page. So the home page uh, will already have uh, the templates Okay. It would already have the categories up. So for example, as you can see here, if you want to say, for example, you want to create a presentation, okay, you can click on presentation, which would show you the available presentation templates. However, um, another option is, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on my end. Okay. Uh, pardon me, there's a lot of folders already because I've done a lot. Um, you can, and I don't know if you can um, see it, but here on top, okay, there is a create a design. If you click on create a design, um, 
you will be given suggested um, formats. Okay, so you could have a video. If you want to edit the video, presentation, and give or create a logo and whatnot. However, you can also create something from scratch by clicking on custom size. You put in the dimensions, okay? Or another option is, okay, you can have, you can edit a photo. Okay. So I'm gonna pause there for a bit. So that's basically it for your um, sign up. Um, once you see that you are already on the home page, then it means that you have successfully signed up. Now, remember earlier when I said you can create a design um, by clicking on create a design um, button. Say, for example, I'll click on presentation. Okay. This is now what you call the Canva editor. Okay, so the Canva editor. Um, Looks something like this. Okay. So this is how the editor would look like. So you have here the main stage where your design happens. So if it's a presentation, you will see there um, a rectangle. You call it your canvas. And then you have all of the menu to the left. So you would have access to photos. You have access to elements. And the very first and the one on top really is the template. So once you click on templates, okay, you will be able to see the different templates that you can use. All right. So earlier, I told you that you know, I have a special gift for everyone. So our gift. So all K-12 teachers in the Philippines and worldwide um, is this. So remember earlier when I asked you that you can or told you that you can easily sign up. What you sign up for is our free Canva account. Okay, so the free Canva account provides you with 8,000 templates, 8,000 plus and still growing, 100 plus design categories, um, hundreds of icons, uh, built-in presentation mode, team sharing, and commenting. This in itself is already a standalone tool. I am a Canva user, or I was a Canva user, even before joining Canva. And the free account itself uh, would suffice. However, remember we told you earlier that we want to empower you. So we want to empower all K-12 teachers in the Philippines and even abroad um, with a free forever premium version for of Canva for Education. And here's one thing. I realize that we have attendees outside of the Philippines. Now, unfortunately, um, we are in phases when we launch Canva for Education. So you might have to check your own locale if that is already available for you. Um, so here in the Philippines, we have already launched Canva for Education. Um, so what will you get um, if you signed up and got converted into a Canva for Education account? Well, very simply, we, we, you, you have access to beef up Canva. Okay, so um, 60 plus thousand templates plus education specific content, 2 million, 2 million plus and growing images. So you have access to our photo library for free. So all of those um, elements that you see that are paid elements will become available for you. Icons, 700 plus fonts, um, including audio and video that you can use for your presentations or other education collaterals. Now you might be asking, Pat, how can I sign up? Well, two things or two ways. Now, option one is you can head up to canva.com slash edu dash sign up using your school or DepEd's email domain. Now we have already whitelisted some of these email domains. 
And uh, just by signing up using those domains, um, we will be able to immediately detect that you are a teacher signing up for a C free account. So remember, you have to go to this URL, canva.com slash edu dash sign up. Now, we understand also that there might be some of you who are working freelance, um, that you are not tied to an institution at the moment. We understand that some of you teachers may have lost their jobs in working part-time, um, probably as tutors or as part-time instructors in some of the universities or institutions. And we also realize that uh, not all would have a school email. So there are schools that cannot provide emails. So what happens? You don't have to worry, you are still covered. Um, because regardless, you are still teachers and you are still part of the group that we want to offer um, and want to help. So the process is a bit different. All you have to do is just to go to bit.ly slash canva ph dash educ, okay? So uh, we'll post it. Um, Chris and M, my colleagues at Canva, is actually monitoring our social media. Um, so we'll be sharing it with you. And uh, later on, um, if you have the time, please join our Canva for uh, Filipino Teachers um, Facebook community. Uh, we have that information as well on how to um, sign up. So again, I'll just go back. If you're using your school or DepEd's email domain, it's canva.com slash edu dash sign up. If you're using your own personal email, it's bit.ly slash canvaph dash educ. However, regardless of how you sign up, your first step is still to register for a free account. Okay, so we have had instances where teachers are trying to sign up, but they ha don't have any um, accounts yet. So step one is to always sign up for a free account because we will be converting, right? So Pat, you might be asking, I submitted my application. What's next? Right. So if you use the first option and you use your school or your email domain um, issued to you by DepEd, you should automatically be upgraded. Um, and later, uh, in the next few slides, I, sh I will show you how you can verify that you have been upgraded or converted. Now, for personal email accounts, it's a bit different uh, because if you go to uh, the URL that I gave you earlier for personal email accounts, um, it's actually a form um, for some of you that may have, or yeah, may have tried opening it. One of the things that you would have to accomplish is to upload a proof that you are indeed a teacher. Um, so it could be an ID, uh, your PRC ID or whatnot, anything that proves there's a list on what are the documents available. Now that goes to an actual person for review. That's why it takes some time. So our customer happiness specialists will be reviewing the application, uh, will be approving and manually also upgrading your account. So that's why it would take maximum, uh, maximum one week, but, uh, depends on the bulk of, um, applications that come in, it may take less than that, if that's the case. Um, now, because we're having the webinar now, uh, what we usually experience is that there's a lot of people signing up during webinars, so it may take that much time, um, maximum of one week, okay? So you might be asking, so Pat, how will I know if I am already part of Canva for Education. So let me bring up my own screen um, and I'll show you where it's found. So if you go back here on your account, the one that has your initials or your picture, if you have already uploaded one, and if you go to account settings, okay, you will actually see um, under billing and teams, okay, you will see here, instead of Canva team, you will see Canva for education. That's what you will see. Okay, so under subscriptions, sorry, under subscriptions, you will also not be using these subscriptions, be Canva for, um, Canva for education as well, right? Now there is an option for you um, to cancel. We just put it there, but I don't know if Someone will be canceling. You're getting this anyway for free. Um, yeah, so here's how it looks like on transcription again for education. There is an option to cancel. Now, if you 
um, click that in error. Okay, click that in error. Um, just send an email to canva dash educ dash philippines at canva.com so that we can revert your account to an education account. Okay. Um, if it happens, uh, sometimes mouse is a bit faulty, you end up clicking elsewhere. Now, another thing that I want to bring to your attention is this next bill. Technically, this is not a bill that you will have to pay. Canva is free for life. Okay, so you can disregard this if you see that you're under Canva for education. Okay. Um, now, here, um, again, we want to reiterate that you know Canva for education is something that we, we give you as teachers as part of um, the things that we do to help the community. Um, and you know that's one of the things that as teachers we want to give back to you as well. Okay? So again, we would like to invite you to join our um, social media uh, pages um, where you will see you know, a lot of resources available for you. So um, it's a, it can, the Canva for Filipino teachers is a very, very active page. Okay, so um, in our Facebook community, just search for Canva for Filipino teachers. Um, please join us there. I can see people asking for uh, the slides and other uh, materials. They are all actually there available for you um, to use. Unfortunately, we cannot readily provide these slides as these are proprietary materials as well. So, but you can always go back to those uh, presentations um, if you want to review plus more. Okay? If you want to know um, additional information about Canva for Education, um, like the more detailed ones, um, our community team has materials or have materials rather uploaded for you to use, okay? So at this point, um, we will now begin um, our discussion on designing educational content for using Canva for education and Canva as a platform. Um, so one good news that I'd like to tell everyone. Um, so for teachers in general, the design principles um, or what we learned in school when we are designing educational materials are still the same, technically regardless of the modality that you're using. Um, so the way that you are crafting or the, the thought process of when you were doing your visual aids, for example, in class would still be the same um, now that you are uh, doing classes virtually. However, because of the change in modality, there are also additional things to consider when making materials for online classes. So uh, one big change, for example, is because we are operating now online, uh, you don't have to make an actual flip chart. You don't have to make all of the cutouts. But instead, you can use and still leverage Canva um, to make your uh, educational materials. One thing still remains the same. Instead of you know using your cutouts and whatnot, here you use design elements at Canva, Canva to make your uh, materials engaging for your students. Okay, so as much as possible, you want your content to be engaging. Okay, so I understand you are still having, and correct me if I'm wrong. You can post it in the comments. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think you still have one hour classes. Um, in uh, most of your classes. So you know, imagine that a kid sitting there for one hour, you know, attention span. Um, so there's also a, uh, a need for us to make it very, very engaging. That's just one. So you use design elements to make your materials engaging. Number two is we bring the concepts of collaboration and gamification. It lets your learners interact with their classmates. We want to make sure that is, there is still a certain level of interaction between your learners. Um, we still want to foster you know, relationships. We want, still want to foster the, the feeling of being with their classmates. 
So Canva actually allows collaboration and gamification. You can create games. Um, your, your, your only limitation is your imagination. Um, later on, I'll show you how it works. Um, how can we collaborate as a class, for example? Okay, so this is one thing that I guess we still need to work on in the academy in, in, uh, for us teachers. Uh, because I understand classes, again, are still very long, one hour. So there is a need to break down lessons into even uh, smaller topics. So one thing that uh, we learned um, is that, you know, a 30-minute Zoom class is actually very taxing for a student. So uh, imagine if you have an hour class, um, it's going to be a bit difficult for, for, for your children, for, for kids to learn towards the tail end of your class. That's why uh, what is suggested is to break down your lesson into smaller topics. Makes it easier for learners to digest to, and to process everything. And at the same time, um, it also allows you to have breaks in between. Uh, the strategy is this. If you have an hour class and you have a topic to discuss, what you can actually do is to break it down into three or two subtopics and then create a mini class for 30 minutes where you have an activity, you have a wrap, wrap up and, and something, and then move to the next part. So it's as if we're having like two mini classes or three mini classes so that children will be at one point, they will only have to read for this number of time, do an activity, do something else, then go back reading. It breaks the monotony of learning, okay? So let's take a look at how do we craft education materials using in Canva. So I told you earlier, one of the things that we wanna do is to make lives easier for people. Um, here at Canva, we want to make complex things simple. In fact, it's one of the six values that we have. Um, so here at Canva, and, you know, not just for education, we have created templates for everyone to use so that it's going to be easier to craft um, whatever it is that you want to publish. Um, and that extends to education. So the very first type of educational material that I'll be introducing to you guys are worksheets. So what's good about our worksheet is that um, these are both printable worksheets, and digital worksheets. So for, for those of you that are strictly doing modules, you can design some of your worksheets in Canva so that your, your pupils or your students, uh, once they receive the worksheet that you did, it's actually well-crafted. It's colorful, especially it's, if it's for kids. Um, essentially, it's not boring. It's going to be more fun for them to... Uh, make their um, worksheets. For those of you that are doing online classes, we also have digital worksheets that you can uh, spread and uh, share to your students. Okay, so um, you can get creative with your teaching methods by making your own uh, both printable and digital worksheet. Uh, what's good about Canva is that um, for those of you who might be handling like private schools, where most of your students have their own printers at home, you can send them a digital copy of the worksheet and have them print it out um, if, if uh, that's what you want. Uh, we also have digital samples. So um, if you go to uh, Canva, go home, uh, go to the home page. Um, this is not the, the education, so you might see other um, templates. But when you are in the Canva for education, it's going to all be streamlined. So the first things will always be education templates. So here, you have already available templates. So these are the templates. That you can use these are all blank and one uh good feature is that let's take a look at and this is always my favorite uh, how to tell time okay so when i click on that um it opens up the worksheet pre-made so you notice 
that the time's already here, right? But I could always edit them, okay? So I could change the time, okay? I could even change the color by clicking on an element, okay? When you see, um, and I don't know if you can see my mouse, here on top you have color swatches. When that appears, it means that you can change the color of um, an element, okay? So you don't have to worry about designing. Okay? Don't, you don't have to worry about um, designing. Because I guess that's also one of the handicaps. And I talked to some of the teachers in the past, even my own teachers uh, when I was still in high school and elementary. Um, I came from um, a university that has a lab school. So I'm a product of a lab school. So we would have student teachers. And um, they, I would hear them talking and having discussions with their fellow student teachers. Um, that they're having or running out ideas, what to do in terms of their visual aids, you know, what what would their worksheets look like. So you don't, that part you don't have to worry. So you worry on the content rather than the design, okay? So um, earlier, um, I told you that you could also do digital. So um, I like uh, this, I'll go back to what time is it, okay? So, from here, um, you can print, uh, you can download, you can, and then you can print. So I'll just show you um, how do we publish, okay? So if you're done, for example, if you're fine with this, um, you can download by clicking on the download icon, the one that shows like an arrow on the upper right, okay? And then you can download it as a PDF. Okay. Or there are other file options. You can download as a picture, either PNG or JPEG, and other file formats. So say I just want to download it as PDF so they can easily um, print. And then I'll just click download. Um, and then I can open it, my own computer, as a PDF file and print it out. Okay. Um, now... Another option is if you're doing a virtual class and you don't want your students, you know, we love Mother Nature, so you don't want them to say um, print, you can do this digital by sharing. So there are other, there are three sharing options available, okay? So you can share the design as to anyone where they can just view. The design okay so uh when you send this or when you click this and you click on copy link the link that you will send them um is just a view only link meaning they cannot edit it this is a good option if you are sharing um your presentation as a or yeah a presentation or whatever it is that you did um and you just want them to see it okay um, aside from presentations, some teachers are using this option to share readings, handouts, and the like. Okay. Um, the next one is anyone with a link can edit. It means that you are technically sharing the entire document. Okay, you can share, you share the entire document. The person can alter. Now the third one is you can publish the design as a template. So um, when you share the design as a template, and this is what you, is two things will appear, view link and template link. You always have to copy the template link. What's the difference? What happens is when you send this link over, and I'm just going to open another window just so you have an idea. Okay. You will notice that there is a button below that says use template. What happens here is once your student clicks this, okay, um, a file will be created similar to what you did, but it's technically a different file. Okay, It's a new file that follows the original design that you did. So this will not be affected. Okay, so this will not be affected. Okay. And so far,
Right. So again, three things here when you're publishing. You can publish, okay, by sending a link where they can edit, meaning uh, they can uh, alter whatever it is that you did. Uh, there's also um, another option which allows them to just view. Okay. So it's good for presentations. It's good for uh, handouts. And then there's another option you publish as a template where they open the file. Um, they create a new one, a new document using your own template. So it doesn't, the first template doesn't get, um, well, this doesn't get um, altered. Okay. I can see, I, I can see questions coming. So just let them, uh, keep them coming. All right. So we also have online whiteboards. Another favorite feature of mine are online whiteboards. Remember earlier I told you you can um, uh, collaborate, okay? So let's go back. So earlier we searched worksheets. This time let's search online whiteboards. Okay. So remember when you were doing brainstorm back in the days where we were still in the office? So Dubai, you're using sticky notes. You would have post posters around where children can, can stick whatever it is that you ask them. We have something similar here. So for example, we have different templates. Okay, we have different templates available. Um, say let's use this uh, brainstorming template. Okay. So you can create a template, say you can ask them, and one teacher actually cleverly used this. So you know the age-old debate, um, so who should be the national hero, Rizal or Bonifacio? So the teacher did something similar. So she created two boards, one for Rizal and one for Bonifacio, and children can actually come in and uh, what they do is they put sticky notes, sticky notes, um, why they see Rizal or Bonifacio as uh, fit for the Pambansang Bayani. So what happens is, yeah, what, what you do is you share this as anyone with the link can edit, okay? So I'm gonna show you how it works. So observe, I am not moving, I am not moving, uh, my window. I'm gonna send it over to another person um, to edit. Okay, so for example, I sent it to one of my students and one of my students, and, and I'll just put it here. One sec. Okay, so I have, I'm using my own personal account. So I have my own personal account up and I'm using uh, my Canva account. So notice, I can actually, and you don't see me writing here, um, I'm using my phone to do this. Okay. Using my, using my phone to do this. Okay. I copied, and you, and then imagine if that's your student, those are your students. You ask them a question and they can post, you just share the link to them and they can post their answers, okay? Uh, this is also a good way if you have very quiet, very, very quiet students um, that may not be that engaged in class. Some of them are too shy to speak up, okay? So it's, it's a good option, um, okay. So aside from virtual whiteboards, we actually have another option available or another um, educational material that you uh, can use okay, um, at your disposal. OK. 
And that is, you can create group works. So remember, once you invite your children to, uh, to your own classroom in Canada for Education, you can send them templates. They can actually create templates on their or designs on their own and share around with their uh, classmates. So you can ask them to create a group work. Now here's what one teacher from Cagayan de Oro actually did. She has a poster making contest or he had a poster making contest for their school's foundation day. Um, and he used Canva as the platform. And because kids cannot be together, he said, no, Canva was the perfect platform to use because kids can just be on their phones or on their desktops and they can individually add elements. So what was done is um, the poster was created by, by, by the students, but they actually did and crafted the poster at the comforts of their home without actually being together. So um, social distance, they did not go out because, well, they, they were less than um, 18 years old. Um, and it's possible because of Canva. So similar to the whiteboard earlier, um, children, your, the, the students can share um, experiment notes, a poster design or a brainstorm activity. And then once the final output is done, they can share the final design with you. So that's also possible. Okay. Now, the next one is something that I personally love, and this is what we call your classroom kit. So yes, we have a classroom kit that's complete with um, a cover design uh, for you, a, a header or a banner header that you can use for your Google Classroom, um, that you could use for your Canva Classroom, um, lesson plans that you can circulate to your students, um, and even a virtual classroom where you could put notes such as your agenda for the day, um, so on and so forth. So a lot of teachers found this very helpful because not only are they given templates for the things that they would, they would need essentially for their virtual classes, um, it's also um, uniform because it's themed. So you have the different themes here. So um, you would see them group. There are other classroom kits available. So all you have to do is to search for these classroom kits. So a typical classroom kit would have a blank lesson plan, a blank lesson plan calendar that you can circulate around, a virtual classroom. This is what the virtual classroom is, the one that looks like your room. And it has different designs. You have the traditional um, chalkboard. For, you have a science class. Okay, And then um, you would have headers for your Google Classroom. And if you're using Zoom, there is also uh, already a design for Zoom virtual background. You can download the background immediately, or you can even tweak um, these designs. Okay, so overall, um, additional tips for creating effective educational content ground in real life applications. Um, that's what we learned. Um, even teachers, you know, uh, children are able to relate more when you relate or when you uh, ground your examples in real life applications. That's why for teachers, we have to go the extra mile and really understand where the students are coming from, what's the in thing right now, what's going on in TikTok, for example, what's the latest, latest fad, because that's where they can relate, okay? Um, and of course, we can always personalize and localize with Pinoy Canva assets. Very quickly, I'm just going to show you that uh, we have Pinoy assets. So if you go to elements, I'm not just going to uh, have something specific, but if you type Pinoy, okay, you would have different Filipino-inspired photos, graphics. So I'm just going to show you the graphics. And okay, we have photos as well. So you have the flag. Um, you have Jeepney. You have um, our icons. Okay, there are even moving GIFs. Um, yeah, you even have our famous lines. Keri lang charot. Okay. So you have all of these available. 
Um, so you have vector lines, you very simple vector lines. You would have even stylized and sketched. Okay. So this one, if you're asking, okay, what is this? That is actually a hook. Okay. So would have and champer na gutom ako bigla. Halo halo. Okay. And uh, a slew of other Filipino inspired um, elements. Okay. Not only that, okay, not only that. If I go to the fonts by clicking here, I could type Pinoy. And we have Filipino fonts available. We have by Bayin. Okay, so Kubao, okay, the Kubao fonts and the Kiapo fonts, okay, are inspired, of course, by our jeepney billboards and um, signages okay so um you also might find this a bit familiar okay um especially the kiapu fonts and uh, the barabara fonts especially barabara because it's also the font that is used by uh, the department of tourism okay so uh if you want it to be as relatable as possible, go ahead, use this. We have fonts like Kawit, okay? And mind you, these were also made by um, Filipino uh, creators. So they created this, okay? Another one is Para, okay? You have Batangas, you have Alta, we have Maharlika. My, this is my favorite font. I love using Maharlika and Kiapo. Those are my two default fonts when I'm using or when I'm creating Canva designs, okay? So that's it for um, the first part. Um, I'm going to pause a bit and uh, probably Sir Franco and Sir Angelo could help us out. Yes. Maraming salamat, Sir, uh, Sir Pat, sa napaka-engaging, napaka-enriching na session na yun. Ngayon pa lang... <laughs> Excuse me no. Ang dami na kagad na excited si Sir ano na Sir Pat. Ako most personally Sir Pat na excited ako dun sa uh, sa ano no sa uh, Filipino assets no kasi yan yung medyo kulang no kasi usually mga assets natin are culturally based sa other countries. Sometimes we, have, we are forced to use it in our materials and sometimes may, there's may disconnect no. But uh -oh. now with it's talagang it like presentations, graphics. Talagang may Pinoy taste na tsaka Pinoy spirit. And that's something that we all appreciate. And actually, ang dami na comments Sir Pat, kanina na while you're presenting the Filipino assets, how well they appreciate that. Yes, it's growing. So, Sir Pat, it's growing. It is growing. The assets are growing okay. for the local. Yes, we're excited for that, Sir Pat. And also the, the fonts, no? Ang kit ng Kiapo fonts tsaka Maharlika fonts, no? Again, definitely going to um, dig on that later on, okay? Pero Sir Pat, okay, we'll give you uh, five, uh, ten minutes of rest maybe uh, in the backstage, okay? Uh, we'll just call you uh, second, entertain some questions, okay, of our audience, okay? Um, we'll be joined, no? Uh, if I may, uh, if um, he's uh, in our stream right now, okay? Uh, Sir Chris, okay, of um, the community lead, no, of Canva Philippines, okay. We'll check if uh, he can uh, go into our stream. Sir, teachers, anyway, um, uh, Sir Chris Devera is very active, no, in our uh, chat. If you have questions, okay, um, please uh, indulge us um, in, in the chat. We'll just wait if um, Sir Chris could also join us in our stream, okay. So, teachers, um. Um, maybe you have some other questions, no? Uh, I already pinned teachers, yeah. Okay. Uh, I already pinned teachers the um, the the link, no, to the um, um, registration for the Canva for Education account. Okay, so if you're using DepEd, so use that link. But of course, there's another link for the those who are using personal accounts. Okay, um, but again, teachers, no, as reminded to us by uh, Sir Pat earlier hindi po tayo makakapag-upgrade kung wala pa tayong Canva account. Okay, so gawa muna po tayo, teachers. Mag-sign up muna po tayo kay Canva na ating personal account, okay? Then after that, we apply for an upgrade, okay? So what we're applying is for an upgrade, okay? So um, they will not be able to, um, to, ano, no, to uh, uh, upgrade your account if you don't have an account yet, okay? So have that account first, okay? And of course, uh, yan, Sir, Sir Chris, good afternoon, okay? 
Okay, hello, yeah, good okay afternoon. Hi, Sir Franco. Hi to all the teachers watching. So, yes, I've been answering questions in the YouTube chat. Yes, very active yung mga teachers ngayon. <laughs> and you can see, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying my best to answer all the questions, but uh, I just want to announce again that you can join our community, Canva for Filipino Teachers. So, uh, my role in Canva is I'm the one who handles that Facebook group, that community. So, um, you know, it's really meant for teachers like you, K-12 teachers in the Philippines. So, we announce uh, new features there or new templates or like mga new Filipino fonts like what Sir Pat talked about earlier. And, you know, it's also a support group for all of the teachers, you know, in this age of remote learning. So, kung may mga uh, tips and tricks kayo or you just have questions on how to maybe do brainstorm activities or how to make a lesson plan. You can also post in the group and other teachers can also help. Uh, sometimes they provide their own templates, their own designs. Yun. So medyo nag, uh, just a collaborative community. Uh, Sir Chris, this is a question that also appeared earlier. Okay, So you might want to address this already uh, in public. Okay, which one? <laughs> This one, sir, no? is Canva Education available for non dep ed teachers like teachers under CHED? Yes, uh, wait. I... CHED is uh, higher education. Strictly speaking, Canva for Education is really intended for K-12 teachers. So, unfortunately, my answer will have to be no. Um, but... Um, you can still try applying because I know there are other requirements that we ask for. So, for example, private tutors can also apply and they just have to provide their PRC ID. I'm not too familiar with that um, specific requirement, but um, when you apply in the Canva for Education website, it will ask naman for the documents. So, as long as you can provide those, you can apply. Um, sir... Chris, this is uh, very specific to uh, to the design you know, aspect. Okay, how how free is the license of the images in Canva? The simple answer to that is as long as it's being used for educational purposes, it's free. So uh, you cannot use the images. You cannot sell the images. For example, like we have a lot of stock images in our library. So if you were if you were to download that and then sell it or maybe use it in a t-shirt design and then sell that t-shirt or if you were to um I'll, I'll stick to i'll stick with those examples but in those use cases then uh you would be violating the license so the canva for education allows you to use even the premium images the premium elements and videos in our canva library granted that you use it for educational purposes Sir, is, uh, how do I know if my account is upgraded? You should get an email uh, to let you know if your account has been upgraded. But the other way is you just go to your Canva account, go to the top right corner where your profile picture is, you know, the little circle. Click that and then go to account settings. And then when you're in account settings, go to the tab that says billings and teams. And then there it will show what kind of Canva subscription you're on. So it will either show you Canva free, Canva Pro, or Canva for education. So that's one way to see what type of account you're on. Okay, there are some requests for our uh, higher ed education uh, teachers, no, Sir Chris. But again, some, that's something that the Canva team will uh, no, no, will look into and yes. will try to uh, no, to see. Okay, but for now, uh, teachers, no, that's already a big one. Having catering it for the K to 12 is already a big one. Okay. Um, sir, it's uh, an international foreign um, audience. Okay. Uh, the link for that's teacher Saranda Singh Tanwar. Okay. Please confirm if you are from the Philippines because I think the link that was given earlier were meant for Filipino educators. Okay. So you'll have to check on your own local uh, Canva, uh, Canva team, okay, wherever you are located. Okay. Yeah, okay, so again, uh, uh, just one last uh, reminder for this, Sir Chris, just so that our audience are reminded once again how to upgrade. Okay, so um, I think the link is 
uh, pinned in the comments section. So if you have, yeah, I pinned it, sir. Your, yeah. So if you have your DepEd Edu emails, you can simply go to canva.com slash edu dot sign up. So it's the pinned uh, link in the comments. But if you are using or if your school doesn't issue an edu email, so for other e for other emails like Gmail and Yahoo, you can go to bit.ly slash canva ph dash eduk. And then just give it, um, I don't have a specific timeline. It may take a couple of days. It may take me more than a week uh, before your account uh, your, or your application is approved. Uh, sir, Chris, may I clarify that? That's bit, bit.ly slash canva.ph dash edu. Eduk with a C. Eduk, eduk with a C. I'm going to send it in our chat. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think uh, Sir Chris will, will can go back to the other questions later, okay, and we'll address them, and, and we'll have again Sir Chris in our hit box. We'll welcome um, our speaker again for the second session of our um, workshop for today. Okay, thank you, Sir Chris, for that. Thank you, Franco. Okay, so uh, teachers, now let's now welcome back again, Sir Pat. Okay, I'm Billy Sir Pat. <laughs> Sir Pat, uh, thank you. So we'll now get into your second session. So teachers, good luck uh, and enjoy. Okay, uh, Sir Pat, um, good luck on your session. Thank you. All right, so uh, thank you again, Sir Franco. So at uh, this part, you know, this juncture, we'll talk about more on presentations. Uh, one of the things that we are working on this year um, and one of our goals is to really beef up our presentations. But we realized that, you know, despite having the templates, um, having despite, you know, all of these uh, elements and assets available, we acknowledge that, you know, the, the, the most important ingredient um, in presentations, and I, I would dare you know, even say, you know, in your classroom, when you're teaching is actually you as a teacher. So. Uh, this afternoon, you know, the, the last part of our webinar, I'll talk about some tips and tricks and, and you know, some best practices on on uh, doing remote presentation. You know, how do you ace and make those presentations to impress? Um, so, well, um, why do presentations need to be impressive? Simply because we need our presentations um, to stick to our learners. Um, as teachers, that's the most important thing that we have to remember. Over and above anything else, we want our presentations to be impressive because we want our learners to remember what we uh, discussed. Um, and uh, we also want to uh, preserve life and avoid death by PowerPoint. Um, I've been in several presentations, um, both in the corporate world and in the academe, uh, where I have experienced and uh, you know, resurrected from um, death by PowerPoint. So um, hopefully through the use of Canva and uh, beefing up your own um, skills in presenting, um, we will be able to uh, avoid because what happens here is that uh, w when you're when when the learners are bored they become disengaged you don't keep them um, so all the hard work that you put in to create those presentations all of a sudden tatapon yun lang yun sa labas I say students will not be listening it's all thrown out the window okay so um, in general, um, there are four elements in making a presentation tick. Okay, so number one, of course, are your visuals. Number two is your story. Number three is how you deliver it and the strategy behind everything. But for this afternoon, we'll be just touching on the two, your visuals and how you tell your story. So let's begin, okay, designing visuals. So... When you think about designing visuals in your presentation, 
it's no different from when you are making your visual aids. Uh, because you are designing something, of course, you have to think like a designer. So in that, uh, we'll be talking about and touching on four uh, basic elements of design. It's color, text, imagery, and layout. And um, how it relates to education. So for some of you that might be following um, our social media uh, webinars in other platforms, you might have seen a, a similar one, but this one will streamline and focus more on education. So color, text, imagery, and layout, and how it affects you know, educational materials and presentations as a whole, a whole. So first, let's take a look at colors. Colors are very important because they invoke meaning. Okay? For some artists, they actually have a wheel that says, I'm using red because of this. I'm using this color because of this. In marketing, it's being used. Um, some brands are colored a certain way because they want to, inv uh, to invoke a certain meaning. Okay? So um, they stick to a certain color family because that's part of their identity. But for us, you know, what we want in color is that we wanted to make our we wanted to make our materials engaging. So here's an example. Okay, this is a cover slide of a presentation for the different regions of the Philippines. So imagine this is how your entire slide looks like, and this is what your learners will see for the rest of the one hour. So I personally, this burns the eye. Okay, so this one is a lot better. Okay, so you have contrasting colors. So the age old question. So what, Patrick, what is that guiding principle, if I may say, that you can share with us? Well, our rule of thumb at Canva, and this is what we follow, is to use a maximum of four colors. So again, teachers, maximum of four colors, a combination of one light, one dark, and vibrant accents. So you can have two, three, or four. Okay. So you can have one light and one dark. That's the most basic. You have a light, dark, and an accent color, or light, dark, and two accent colors. Okay, so um, again, so light or dark. If you if you are just using two colors, it's light or dark. If you want to use three colors, it's light, dark, and an accent color, um, or light, dark, and two accent colors. Anything more than four, we found out, is already distracting to learners, okay? So also, personally, I was not uh, really particular about this until such time that you know, we found out researching through our educational partners that really what is, uh, in terms of computers and mobile phones, um, is to use dark backgrounds, okay? Um, it's easier on the eye, and at the same time, um, it is a bit difficult if you are, uh, it's, it's easily straining on the eyes to use light backgrounds, but you can still use it, okay? So for most of the pages, we use a dark background. I'm not, re I really say that it's, it's uh, black, but if you have like you know, the dark use of blues or the maroons, okay? But still, you can use light background, okay, on top and using dark on the text, okay? So I still am using this, but it's more of transition slides, okay? So um, I don't know if, I don't know if you're using laptops right now, but compare this background from this background when I switch it. This can be overwhelming especially um, if you're using, if the eyes are being straining for quite some time, okay? So um, you can use still light, trans, the light backgrounds for transition. Okay, another question, which is also my own question, 
I'm not good at colors. Okay, so what is the, 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 the color palette? Okay, so you don't have to worry. Okay. Um, you can go, and I am also using this, www.canva.com slash colors. So you have a color palette generator. That's one of the tools. If you're if you have a peg of a photo, um, and you want and you and you want the photo to be the theme of your presentation, you can upload it, and the color palette generator will generate the palette of the color, uh, a palette of colors that's in the picture. Now you can you also have color palette ideas. Okay, we have color wheel and we have color. If you want to know the different color meanings, we also have it. Okay, so. Very quickly, canva.com slash colors. Okay. So I am actually using this. So here, you have different color palettes available. Okay. And if I click on them, you know the inspiration behind it is this cake. And you have the colors available. So you don't actually have to think of what colors to use, okay? Now, um, the color palette generator um, is, uh, go back. You upload the photo and the tool will extract uh, the four top colors, okay? Now one um, neat feature is this. So I can actually create a preso, I'll create a presentation, and I'll add in a photo. Um, we have somehow integrated um, the color palette here, uh, the color, color palette generator. So say I'm going to use this photo. And here is uh, the background. Notice that we actually, or the you already have the color palette of the photo generated. So if you want to use the colors of the pictures, um, Canva will has integrated the generator generator already inside um, the editor. Now. If you have uploaded several photos, the stage or the the, uh, the tab here will only house, I think, a maximum of two or maximum of three. But there will be uh, a button that says see all so that you will see the colors of all the pictures that you have uploaded. Okay, one of the uh, greater uh, great features that I observed. Um, and then the other one, we have the color wheel. Okay, so if you pick a color, for example, I'm going to pick this color, and I can generate a monochrome, an analog, or a triad. Okay, so I can generate this. So if you want to, what's the monochromatic color for this red? It's this, um, an analogous. Okay, so I think that's the alternate in the color wheel, um, tetrads and triads. Okay, and then. You can just simply click to copy the X value. Okay. Neat, right? Okay. So one thing also as, as a reminder uh, for teachers um, is to be cognizant of your um, students who may be colorblind, number one, and students who may have seizures or epilepsy. There are certain color palettes that may trigger um, epileptic, epileptic seizure. So if you want, and if you're interested in that, I would suggest you look up and study um, accessibility in presentations or accessibility in um, online publications. So I, I know the accessibility organization has um, published uh, some guidance on how to go about um, that. So it's just recently that I had my own accessibility training that I realized that if you have an epileptic patient, you have to, you know, the yellow that I showed you earlier, that can actually trigger. Um, you avoid certain videos that might trigger 
um, epileptic seizure. So um, I suggest that you also uh, dabble into that and uh, and study because it can also help. Okay. So that's that's basically it for colors. Next one will be, and this is another favorite of mine, typography or using fonts. Okay. Now the general rule of thumb is to stick with one main family. So one good thing about Canva is that when you search for fonts, you will actually be presented with the families already. So if you type Open Sans, for example, um, you will see that the, um, in the results, you will have the font families already. Um, now, what if, Patrick, I search and there's just one, one font available for it? It means that it's a standalone font. Um, it doesn't belong to a family. Okay, so... Um, one thing that you have to remember is that for educational content, um, simple is better, not too fancy, please. Okay, so you can use the fancier fonts for design, but not for your regular readings. Also, if you're using fonts on your presentation, because that's what we are talking about, it's always suggested to use 30 and above text, um, but minimum for 20 of 24 for footnotes. This ensures that regardless of the device that they're using, um, even if they're using cell phones, your um, text will still be readable for your um, students. Third, when you're using text is make sure that you don't also overwhelm, number one, overwhelm the students with the amount of text and use a clear text, okay? Now, if you take a look at this, at first glance, it may seem that it's okay, okay? It may seem that it's okay. Uh, but if you, if you think about it as a presentation and someone is using a cell phone for this, okay? Um, because the font for the text is number one, very thin, okay? And at the same time, there's just a lot of text. Chances are it will be a bit difficult for the learners to actually read. Okay, so much more if your learner is actually using a cell phone to read, okay? So there is an attempt here to edit, but if it were me, I would have made this or used a different font, okay? Not this font. Um, probably a thicker font, or if there's really uh, an attachment to the font and using the font, um, I would have made this bigger. At the same time, um, just, okay, if you take a look at the, and I'm going back to the previous slide. This one is not Canva. I remember my teacher in high school told us this. If you're going to use this as your, okay, not PowerPoint presentation, so you probably would guess my age. If you're going to put everything on your acetate, uh, Yes, I was still at the, I was part of the era that's using acetate and uh, OHPs or overhead projectors. Um, then might as well just print photo or photocopy and give us your acetates to read. So I was always taught that when I'm using uh, presentation to just put in the more important details and just talk everything through. That's the reason why I'm there in the first place. Okay, so if this was a reading, then that's fine. Okay, here's another one. Okay, so this is actually neat. At first glance, it's also okay, but there is a more efficient way to do it. And here's one, because we just want to highlight the 98%. If I am sharing this to my students, for example, and I'm talking about social media relationships, okay, I just want to highlight that 98% increase in engagement then the rest will be something that I talk through, okay? Um, now again, make sure, and here is my own personal tip. Um, try as much as you can if you have a presentation and you know that your audience will be looking at your presentation using different media. What I usually do is I try to look at it using my own laptop. I also try to take a look at it using my phone. If both are okay, it means that I'm safe. Okay. So that's that's a rule of thumb, okay? The next one will be about using imagery and graphics. 
And this is also another thing that sometimes can be overdone. Okay? Um, so I can use this slide, and I'm going to use the health benefits of a watermelon. And again, what's wrong with this slide? It's all text. If I am going to present this to my uh, teacher, that teacher in high school, he will tell me, just print it and send it to me. Let's stop your presentation. I'll just read it. Because everything is there. So what's my purpose? Just to photocopy or print. Okay? I could transform this, make it more engaging to students by using pictures and just highlighting the important stuff. That's the first option. Okay? So highlight the important stuff and, stuff and use imagery. Uh, you have a C4E for Canva for Education. You have access to all of these. So you could either use, in this case, what was used was um, an element, a picture, but you can also use and search for an actual photo of a watermelon, for one. Remember, you can even spruce it up even more. Uh, so from this, what are the more important points? Okay. So from this, I can transform it into like an infographic. Okay. And as I am presenting, okay, I just refer to the different icons. Another th take on this is to lay it out a bit differently, just for um, imaging purposes. Okay, so makes it engaging. So if I'm talking about health benefits of a watermelon, uh, I talk through all the four benefits, and my students will not be looking at the slides. They will be more of listening to me because they're not be busy listening from the side, from the slides, or sorry, reading from the slides. Okay. So aside from using imagery, okay, and using, you know, um, laying out everything, uh, there's also something as what we call a white space. So we have to also learn how to embrace white space. Okay, so don't cramp everything onto one side. Don't overcrowd. Using spaces in your presentation actually has a visual relief. Okay, so... For me personally, I am a big fan of using white spaces um, because, again, it, it adds that visual, um, I don't know, for me, it, it, visually, it's just that it's very appealing. And it's also, it doesn't crowd, uh, not the eyes, but it doesn't crowd the mind. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll go back to uh, earlier. Okay, remember this, okay? So I just have one statement here, okay? Um, I could add in additional stuff in there, but uh, what I want really is for everyone to focus on the question that I have there in, in, in the, the, the post. You can also do the same, okay? So for example, uh, you want to highlight uh, a certain topic. Say you want to highlight a quote uh, from Jose Rizal. Okay, so you can have like a, just an empty, and there's nothing bad by using a plain slide with a very simple white background or a dark background. Sometimes create that impact, okay? Or you can also use this. Play on the spaces. Okay? So choose the important... Um, Topics or the important points, put it there and you lay it out. Notice the white spaces without text. Okay. You are drawn to read. Okay. So even if it's just this part that has text, because of the clever use of the white space, okay, you are drawn to read that those uh, statements inside the box. Okay. So so far we have colors. Again, so for colors, we have canva.com slash colors to help you out. But then as a general rule of thumb, again, maximum four colors. Um, but you can have just, you know, the, the common and traditional light, light and dark. Um, the other one um, is uh, the use of fonts. So again, make sure that your fonts are readable. It doesn't crowd your slides. Uh, let us preserve the more, fa the more fancy or the fancier fonts for decorative purposes. Uh, they have a special place, but not really in the regular texts of our educational materials. 
you can probably use them in book covers or in opening slides. That's fine. And uh, also the use of imagery. Okay. Um, and then the last one will be more of laying it out. And here is a clever use of still usage of fonts. Um, now, if you want to highlight something, um, your layout actually is one key ingredient to do that. So you can use weight. You can use color. You can use size. And you can use all three to illustrate the point. So um, for me, that's sometimes what I use. Like I have one statement, and I change the color of one word that I want people to focus on. Okay. Other one is using weight in the layout. Now, people are, are trained to follow a certain hierarchy. So you're all trained to follow a certain hierarchy. Um, if you take a look at this, you will always read the one that's the biggest down to the smallest because your brain tells you that whatever is the biggest is the most important, even if it's located someplace else. It's also very conspicuous. You don't have any choice. You can actually read it because it's so big. I don't actually have to read, uh, sorry, to look at the slide and focus on it. Like I, from my peripheral vision, I could already see that there's this big text that says you will read this first. Is your eyes are drawn to it. Okay, so those are the four basic elements. Um, again, we invite you to join our uh, Canva Filipino Teachers community because we have graphic design courses available for you there that's been run by some of my colleagues. A lot of them are graphic designers of Canva. Um, they have more in-depth discussion on graphic design. Um, additional tips and tricks that you can use to beef up your presentation. But we said earlier that, you know, we have our impressions have to be impressed. Sorry, presentations have to be impressive, and the visuals are just one aspect of it. Now that you have your visuals, it's time now to tell your story. Now, if you're, when you were designing, you were asked to think like a designer, when you are now telling your story, have to think like a storyteller okay so um robert mckee once said you know stories or the stories that we tell other people are the currency of human contact we are drawn to stories you agree we are drawn to stories um go back to when we were still um able to go to school um during lunchtime we have our co-teachers we go out and eat with them in the cafeteria and why does our lunch break take long? Because of stories. Um, the very basic currency of human contact is story. People are interested to tell their stories. People are interested to hear stories from other people. We grow up listening to stories from our parents. Um, and through stories, we're able to relate to other people. Okay? Um, now... For a good story to be considered as good, um, stories either feature, should feature a transformation. That is, when people hear a story, uh, they root for a protagonist. Okay, So they have their idols, uh, and they would root for that. And stories have a clear structure. Um, it follows a certain, certain logic, and it's easy to follow. They would always have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay, So you might be asking, what is this? Uh, how is this related to me teaching in a class? Well, a lot. As teachers, you tell your stories that feature transformation. Okay, So some of you might be teaching uh, or might have advisory classes. Okay, So um, as part of being an advisor, you actually use stories. You tell them stories of your experiences, stories of your previous classes. Um, stories on how they will be good kids in the future. Uh, and then you tell them stories that inspire them. Uh, eventually, they might idolize you or they might idolize other people. You tell them stories about history. You tell them stories about the Rizals, the Lapu-Lapus. You tell them stories of um, how people in the Japanese era 
or how Filipino tried to survive in the Japanese era, um, how we were struggling uh, during the different eras of presidency, you know, how great a certain president is, for example, or um, when you were telling them the story of Florante at Laura, or even this. Um, and this is something that I got from my own teacher. The reason why I so love math, because my teacher in math, all of them are telling us stories. Um, and math, for me, became a story time, a play time. Um, that's why I did not you know, abhor math. Um, now, um, stories also have a clear structure. When you teach, you don't just teach whatever it is that you remember, right? You actually have a lesson plan. You have your objectives, you have your review, you have your lesson proper, you have your, um, you have your, uh, what do you call that? That's your review and then your quiz. And then the next time, the following day, you go back and circle back, you have your review again, you have your engage, you have your, you have your um, lesson proper again, and you write it down, right? Remember when you were still studying, when you were still student teachers, you used to write that in, in your, in your uh, lesson plan books. Right? So you don't just teach whatever it is that, ah, oh, this is what I feel teaching today. So it still has, it still follows a three-part uh, structure. Okay, so um, for me, you know, even when I was, and mind you, um, when I was in the academe, I was teaching math. But I would still follow and subscribe to this, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Because that's how your, your students will tell you. Students would, would, would ask their, their, their classmates, O, oh, ano yung ginawa nyo kanina? Nagpa-quiz ba si sir? Ano yung lesson? Tapos, yung assignment pa? If you take a look at that, that still is a three-part story. And that's how you still teach. Okay? That's why being a good storyteller is also a requirement for being a good teacher. And this is what I was trying to tell you. Okay? So it follows that. Here, it's divided into acts. The way that I look at it, you know, this is even your entire grading period, okay? You have your syllabus, right? You have your prospectus. You have the things that you actually teach students. And the way that I look at it is this. I plan out my lessons, and at the back of my mind, I already try to plan out how I will tell the story to my um, students. Case in point, if you're teaching arithmetic to elementary, you would always start with addition, subtraction, before you go into multiplication and division. Because I'll, I'll just relate it to addition and multiplication. My story starts with addition. I, I tell them, I tell them the story of how to add things. And then once they're adept at adding things, that's when we start introducing the concept of multiplication. So there is also a build up over the course of the entire um, grading period because that's how it works. You also build up the story. You don't teach multiplication first, then, ah, I remember I want to teach addition. No, it doesn't work that way. That's why you also plan out your lessons. Um, so um, ultimately, what we want to happen is by the end, not, not just either your presentation, your lesson for today, um, or at the end of your semester, we actually go through what you call your spark lines. Okay? So you start your grading period or your presentation painting them a picture of a reality. Say, for example, science teacher is here teaching about chemical reactions. You start with the basic concept of what the chemical reaction is. Right? And then there's probably a lab in the in as part of that and that's what a call to adventure let them discover and probably okay probably you design your course okay you design your course so that as part of their adventure they get to discover that not all chemicals when added will actually yield for a reaction and then that's your precursor to the periodic table telling them that the one on the left doesn't react on the one to the right that you talk about now your covalences in your electrons. You talk about your stable and unstable element. And then as you build up and as you end your SEM, you talk about balancing equations. 
you talk about enthalpy, you talk about entropy. So that's how it goes. Um, it still is a story. So aside from your visuals, the way that you think about your presentation is very important. Okay, so you go through that cycle. You call that your spark lines. Okay, what is, what could be, and at some point you call to action. That's your lab. In English, that could be what you teach them. Okay, grammar, basic rules of grammar. Show them what bad grammar looks like. Okay, and at the same time, have them a book report. So that not only will they be able to show you through the paper that they actually learn grammar, they also get to appreciate other people's writing. Or in history, for example, you start building up the concept of how did Hitler and how did uh, the Nazi actually started in Germany, but how they became successful and their eventual downfall. And in the end, you ask them to write reaction papers to several articles. So as you can see, it's very important that you also consider the story because as great as your visuals are, you're great as a designer, you are also a great storyteller. And this, I'd like to end okay, our discussion this afternoon. Dear teachers, the future is not a place that you are going to go. Okay? It's a place that you get to create and that for me, encapsulates what your profession is. Okay? As teachers, you mold individuals. Okay? As teachers, you, know, you teach in the hopes that in the future, they actually become productive citizens of the country. That's why I told you earlier when I started, secondary to me being a product of my parents and my experience, I am a product of my teacher because I, I really strongly believe that part of the place that I that that part of where I I am right now was a place that was created by my teachers. Okay, so thank you uh, for sharing the afternoon with me. Again, join us in our exclusive teachers community for Canva for Filipino teachers. Some of you I see from the comments are already part of it. That is not just a a a, a, a community uh, where you get you know uh, info from us. There's actually a lot of sharing that happens. Post your designs, uh, critique. Some of the teachers will post their designs and ask for help. How does this look? Um, they would they would provide you tips and tricks. It's a very very active community. And while you're at Facebook, please follow us in our social media pages. Uh, we are in Instagram at Canva underscore ph. Uh, we are in Facebook Canva ph, and we also have a Twitter account Canva ph. Yes, Chris and uh, our social media team, the community team, is answering. So wag kayong magtataka kapag ka nag-post kayo anything Canva that someone actually will reply from us. Those are not chatbots. Those are actual people. So guys, publish and share at Canva PH and in our community. Thank you. My name is Patrick Bellior again, and I am from Canva. Um, so I guess we have some time for some Q&A, Sir Franco. Sir, Sir Pat, are you still there? Yes. Yep. Can I, okay na ako. Yan. Okay. I think naka-mute pala ako kanina. No? So, uh, thank you again, Sir Pat. No, we're just waiting for uh, one of the administrators of Kaga Petition Support. I don't know if she's going to come in yan. At uh, Sir Pat, uh, meet one of our administrators, uh, Teacher Pao. Teacher Pao, our um, Pao. guest speaker for today, uh, Sir Patrick Villora. Yan. Hello, okay. Sir. Yes. Uh, Sir Pat, I think uh, we can now no, proceed to our Q&A teachers. Uh, it's now time for our Q&A. Do you have questions, concerns okay, uh, that uh, Sir Pat no, might be able to address? Okay? We're also, uh, no, uh, I think Sir Chris will be in the chat, no, uh, reply in the chat, no, or if she can, he can also join us later on. Okay? So uh, anyway, teachers, let's um, look, Sir uh, Pat, no, let's wait for a while because all the messages right now are all thank you. Uh, they have learned so much. Okay. Uh, all of those things. No? So there are no questions yet so far. Okay. Siguro, I just I want because to take the... in time. No? I'll, uh, sige, I'll, I'll post the link again. 
for those of you that um are asking if they can join um so i i i did address this earlier but i know we have um teachers from outside the philippines who are um join or who wants to join canva for education so again canva for education the way that we are launching it is per locality um so for the philippines we have officially launched last year in june uh but in other locales what you can actually do is go to your canva account and uh, look for the help file so in the help file search for canva for education and it would show you if your country is already part of um canva for education so if your country yeah. is really part of canva for education then go ahead and uh I'm I'm still getting questions from the chat earlier. Uh, you really just have to have a personal account first um, to convert. Okay, so apply for a free account and then go through either the account for the education. So my question, Kanina, about non dep ed. For as long as you are K to twelve, um, you can have the Canva for education. Now for tertiary teachers, it's still in the works um hopefully we'll get to here soon if we can open it to uh to tertiary or ched um teachers see miss nursey says miss galiak has a question do we have a built-in template to yes, us um, drop and drag na lang ng content si teacher yes actually canva is drag and drop so all you have to do is to look for elements just drag nyo lang uh drag and drop uh how many students to answer the online whiteboard? Um, we have actually, I have actually uh, um, did a collaboration exercise with 97. Um, but let me let us go back to you if there is a limit. Uh, lang, medyo, medyo pag 97 yung nagpo-post. But yeah, that, that much, you can collaborate. Okay. So this one is from... Uh, Miss Grace, uh, Mary Grace Buhay. Hello, Sir Pat. Sir, may I ask if we will, we will use the online whiteboard? Do the students need a Canva account as well to use the link if it's shared? All right. So what happens if, if they don't have a Canva account? They will, um, if you will invite them through email, kasi, um, they will receive a notification in the email um, and they will go through the sign up process for them to be in the, uh, in the app. Okay. Yes, you can create Filipino inspired worksheets in Filipino language. Um, Canva is uh, built for all uh, cultures, including us. That's why we're trying to localize a lot of these templates. In Canva, we have what we call the localization team. Yun talaga ang aim nila is to localize, to localize as much as possible. Um, that's why we have fonts. We have um, all the elements, pictures, and uh, dear teachers, uh, I, I want to tell everyone also that we are the design hub for Canva. So most of the elements that you're seeing there are actually made here in the Philippines. So uh, we we are we are uploading them. Uh, we have illustrators here. We have um, photographers that are here. Um, so. The design hub really for Canvas here in the Philippines. Yep. And we are doing designs even for other locales, so even Brazil, Czech Republic, because Canva really has that vision. Uh, Canva has that vision that if you are, for example, uh, an Indian teacher catering to Indian students, you would have elements available for Indian. For here in the Philippines, we have elements and they go out per season. So, for example, la, uh, this upcoming June 12th, we have started releasing our um uh, araw ng kalayaan series uh we released our mother's day uh assets already for the mother's day upcoming is the father's day and these are localized assets uh with greetings in tagalog hello if it's okay i'd love to add to some. our uh, to sir chris yes hello. go ahead Thank sir you. chris uh, yes actually we have a lot of filipino templates as uh, sir pat said um Actually, I'd love to share my screen just to show some of the templates. We also have Filipino like presentations for school. We have someone, let's see, I hope you can see it. 
So these are just some. So some of them can be used for educational purposes as well. Uh, we have some about uh, like different modes of public transportation in the Philippines, different flowers or different uh, regions. And um, it should be automatic already for you that the language, or you should be able to see these Filipino templates right away. But if you don't see these, what you can do is go to your account settings. So you just click your um, profile picture in the top right corner, go to your account settings, and then just change your language to either English with Philippines in parentheses, or you can also uh, use Canva in Tagalog. So either of these options will allow you to see right away all of our localized Filipino templates. So if you're on English US, uh, you might not be able to see these templates. You might not also be able to see the Filipino fonts that Sir Pat talked about earlier. So just try to check your, check your language settings to see all of our local content. That's nice. Galing nun, ah. I mean, you know, you really, you know that you are in a community that's, what, um, Filipino-inspired talaga siya. So, ang ganda. Ang ganda nung, nung application. It's not just, you know, in, it's an international brand or what, pero nandito talaga siya sa Pilipinas. Kudos. Yan. Galing. Sir Franco, ikaw ay nakamute muli. This is one is from Sir Mitch. Uh, will there be integration of stock animations in Canva soon, like explainers? Um, for the explainers, um, it has been brought up in the past. Um, it isn't. It's considered, but it's not really in the pipeline right now, uh, because we want to beef up a lot of the elements as well uh, for all the locality, uh, all the locales. Uh, and in terms of um, animations, if you're looking at you know the hardcore animations, really, uh, we don't have that right now. But in place of that, we have beefed up our line of animated GIFs. And that's also the reason why we are beefing up as well our videos as well as audios. So similar to what um, Chris discussed earlier, because it has been asked for photos for both stock videos and stock um, um, audio, for as long as they are used within bounds of education, they are not being used to sell. For example, you download the, the video and sell it as to another, like you, you, you send it to uh, whatever stock um, site, um, you're covered. Okay? So you can use those still. They are already pre-licensed by Canva. Thank you, Sir um, Sir Pat. I think we have several other questions, although it's been flooded by with thank you. We thank you so much uh, and appreciation. No? I think there are no more questions as, unless Sir I thought I think there's one. Um this one is um from Oh My Pinay. Will it be possible to contribute also in creating Philippine elements in the community? Okay, so I let Chris, would you be able to handle it? Because we have contributors. We have actually freelancers. Um, okay. I, would you know where, I, I forgot to say where they can. Uh, sure. Uh, so that's a great segue to promote our other community. So we also have Canva for freelancers. So it's another official Canva community. Um, and we have a Canva creators program, if I got the name right. There are deep, actually we recently posted uh, a more in-depth post about it. So you can check it out. And then essentially what um, what it does is you can be, you can contribute templates to our library and then, you know, be paid per template. Or you can also contribute, uh, I, I believe, elements as well. So please uh, check out the page. Just search Canva for freelancers on Facebook and then just join the first group you see. And then you'll see, I'll see, I'll try to tag you if I can, I, I don't have your name, but I'll try to, hopefully you can find the post about Canva Creators Program. Uh, don't worry, no teachers, okay? Um, just a Chris, no? we'll put all of these addresses no? um, into our page. Okay. So Sir, to inform us. 
I think Sir Chris will want to share one more template, I think. Yes. Um, so here we go. So I just wanted to show one of my favorite templates. So example, you search heroes and you want to talk about Philippine heroes. So we have several templates already. Let's see this one that are complete already. I'm oh, not complete, but they have basic info already that you can use to get started with your lesson plan. So for example, here, it already comes with illustrations, some general background on the hist on the hero. So we're constantly building this library of, you know, just uh, usable content for teachers. So it's great that we got that question previously. So if there are teachers that want to contribute, uh, we will be opening more opportunities for that to help to really build this library. So other ones, for example, oh, sorry, maybe this might take too much time, but yeah, uh, just feel free to search. You can also add words like PH, Philippines, or Pinoy when you're searching to really narrow it down to the local content. Again, thank you. I think this would be the last question that will entertain. Uh, it's uh, Sir Pat, uh, Sir Chris. Sure. So, uh, currently, question yan. Um, currently, it's only accessible online. Ngunit subalit na tapuat. Uh, antay lang po tayo dahil inaantay din po namin yan mismo sa Canva. That is a project that is already running since 2017. Um, medyo it's seeing the light of dawn uh, because it's one of our priority projects for the year. So hopefully, we get to ship it out soon. If if it's already shipped out, we will let the community know because all of you are excited. Um, just to give you a background, the the push for the offline mode actually came in really during the pandemic. Um, when we launched, okay, so story lang no. When we launched Canva for Education last year, Cliff, who is our chief finance officer and part of our founders as well, saw the pictures of some of teachers in Mindanao um, that had to go up the mountains or be on the streets just to get signal. So Canva offline kasi was a bit shelved for quite some time. Uh, but the, 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 our founders realized that, you know, internet is not just a struggle in the Philippines. Um, we went to Nigeria also last year um, for, for, for another project. And that was also something that we uh, realized. Um, I had a project also with uh, South Africa for something totally different, and that was also a struggle. Not everyone was realizing that there was a really now to push for an offline mode. So antay antay lang ko. It's also something that I have been personally looking for um, since I started in 2019. It's already in the works. So sana sana sana. Soon siya. And that's a workaround for Ka teachers. Excited, you know, kahit ano pa lang, hindi pa final. Sorry, sorry. And but uh, as a workaround for teachers with limited internet, you can also just download your Canva presentations as an MP4 video, as a PDF file, or yeah. even as a PowerPoint file if you need to present it offline for now. Right, I saw just saw one question earlier. It's recurring um, for the crew. Um, if if you're just newly hired, um, because I saw one earlier, major next roll up ang siya. Um, other proof that you're a teacher if you have your PRC license, your ID, your PRC ID that would suffice. It doesn't have to be like a proof that you're teaching in an institution. Remember, Canva for Education. Um, even if you're if you're a private tutor, um, you are eligible. Um, and take note, ALS and SPED teachers are also included. Okay, so AL ALS. SPED and K to 12. Yun lang muna. Uh, CHED teachers and faculties in the tertiary and graduate schools, uh, we will let you know soon. If, uh... But then again, just like what I told you, you know, the free version itself can stand on its own. I was on free version for three years and I was able to, uh, I was able to still churn out good quality um, designs. Okay. Thank you, Mara Po. No, siguro, Teacher Pao, um, we can now proceed to the, the next part no, of our session for today, which is 
of course to show appreciation to uh to our speakers no have uh, to to sir to our speaker for today okay? uh who have uh, shared uh, his time no to to share with uh, with us uh, his expertise and knowledge on um on uh Canva for education okay so we'd like to present this okay Yes, to show our appreciation to our two speakers, no? Uh, the Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Sir Patrick Belliora for his invaluable contribution as a guest speaker in the recently concluded webinar entitled Canva for Education, awarded on this day, June 10, 2021, to be signed by Sir Angelo Santos, Sir Joseph Angelo Santos, myself, Sir Angelo B. Maliari, and Sir Franco Nicolo Adun. The same certificate is also presented to Sir Chris. So thank you so yes. much. Thank Marami you so salamat much na. for sharing. I'm sure the teachers may jubitin pa yan. Yan. Okay. Hey, sir Chris and uh, Sir Pat no, for, for your time. Okay? And as always, no, yung uh, uh, accommodation talaga ng Canva Philippines uh, ay sobrang nakaka-amaze no yung talagang gagawa nila ng paraan sobrang busy nila they will uh, put people uh, and uh, help us no understand better and plus again no in itself the platform is awesome in itself so again sir chris um sir pat maraming salamat for for your time for today uh, we hope to see you again soon if uh, kung mapapagbigyan niyo ulit kami but uh, for now um pasasalamat po na sa sa lahat ng contribution niyo para sa mga so much. So, uh, siguro, Sir Pat, uh, Sir Chris, any final message or um, like um, like message to our teachers? Uh, thank you for attending and please join my, our community, Canva for Filipino Teachers. We'll also have another, we'll also have our own webinar later in June. So, kung, nabi, kung nabitin kayo dito, we'll talk more about Canva for Education there. Yep. Uh, so, thank you, thank you. Uh, for attending, thank you for sharing the time. Thank you for all the things that you do uh, for us. So, yun, this is just a small way of us giving back. And uh, please let us know what you think about Canva. Thank you. Siguro magpapaalam na tayo muna no, to uh, Sir Pat and Sir Chris. Okay? And again, uh, please don't forget to, uh, to join the, the groups mentioned by Sir Chris and um, Sir Pat no, uh, for you to be able to maximize, optimize no, the resources provided by um, by Canva Philippines. Okay, yan na, Teacher Pao. Ayan na. Medyo kinilig talaga ako dun sa offline mode. Ayun yung talaga yung kinilig sa... <laughs> yes. Yung, grabe yung... Nung sasagutin na niya yung question na tingin ko, very positive yung sagot. Okay, sabi ko, um, nako parang ano yan. <laughs> Good news yan. Okay. So, Teacher Pao, I know you came from a meeting, pero um, yes. how was the so far? Okay, na, na ano ka pa rin... Alam ko, medyo, ano ka na, no? Uh, sumasabog na yung utak mo ngayon sa mga ideas na. So, brother, <laughs> hindi ko na maano, so, no, maano. So, kumusta, Sir Teacher Pao? Actually, yung hinabol natin, no, part two, ang dami ko pa rin natutunan. Kulang pa rin yung papel ko. Kala ko wala ko masusulat. Hindi, ang dami, no? Um, yung connection talaga nung, nung visual na ginagawa mo and how you actually teach. They're interconnected, eh. Talaga. Yes. Para kung yes. yung pa lesson. Correct. Ang ganda ng comment ni White. I-highlight, ano? Kasi perfect yung, <laughs> yung, ano niya, yung comment niya. Nahanap ko na ang the one. Congratulations, oh. Teacher Manolita White. <laughs> Nahanap na ang the one. So, talaga naman talaga, no? Sa totoo lang, pag Kanina nga, actually, no, kahit alam mo ni si Canva, yung mga diniscuss ni Sir Pat kanina, sobrang dami mo pa rin makikita at malalaman. So, talagang, um, Ano no um at, at y- ang disclaimer pa ni Sir Pat teacher pa kanina bago kami mag-start ng session is that we're just going to scratch the surface. Hindi. Surface lang 'yon. Hindi, I doubt. Lang yun, ano? Yes. Oh, yes, the yung ano din teacher pa. Anyway, uh teachers no, so we hope that you enjoy the session for today. Okay, please don't forget before we start our evaluation, okay? Uh please don't forget that we're going to have our session tomorrow, okay? This is uh, a new appears a day okay, um 
um, for every other weeks, no, uh, other week, need to, uh, need to weekly, okay. So please uh, do join our first webinar, uh, <laughs> first ever uh, installment <laughs> ng webinar natin on Ed Puzzle. Okay, so yeah. meron po tayong Ed Puzzle. Uh, yes, okay. It will be talking about introduction, account, find, edit, and assigning videos. Okay, it will be tomorrow, June 11, 2021, 6 p.m. to 7. 10 p.m. One hour full and pack of session. Yeah, okay. That is yes, Philippine teachers. time. Uh, teacher Sonia, that would be. Yes, that's going to be Philippine time. Okay, so uh, uh, PST, uh, Philippine Standard Time. Okay, so uh, Teacher Pao, yes. <laughs> Habang nagkukwentuhan pa tayo dito, ipakilan natin ang ating um, um, what tawa, ano ba to? evaluation link natin. Okay, so pakicheck na lang, teachers, kung tama ba. Okay, uh, don't, don't mind. <laughs> No, hindi ko lang napaltan yung diba, no? pero uh, please uh, do check. Uh, it's uh, https uh, colon slash slash b dot bit dot li slash kts sts 21. Okay? So please do check if it works. If it doesn't, we'll fix it right away. <laughs> Kasi sometimes nagkakaroon ng problema ang ating mga links. No? Okay? Yan. Oh, natin yan. Okay, so do, do, let, me, do let us know, teachers. Okay? And yes. See you tomorrow, teacher Jesse. It's working. Okay, so maraming salamat po. Um, so teachers, you can now don't forget mind po no lagi kasi meron nakaka nag-email sa amin, hindi pa nila natatanggap yung certificates. Yun pala nag-bounce back. Okay? So please make sure na tama po ang email address natin. Sometimes meron din pong mga nagpapapalit ng pangalan sa certificates natin. Please make sure din po tama ang ating pangalan no para po uh, whatever goes into the form goes into your certificate. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, uh, teacher Thomas, uh, sir. Okay, you can um, get it now. It's uh, uh, being flashed on screen. Let me also put that in our comment section for ease of access. Okay. Teacher Pao, yes. how was your day today? I, I heard oh. you came from a meeting. <laughs> Yes, it's actually a teacher's congress. No? Actually, full full of learnings today. No? Hindi ko na alam kung sa, some part ng brain cell ko ba ipapasok ito. No? Buti, meron pa, ta, meron pa ako natirang space para sa Canva. Kasi what they actually shared is something that I think most teachers would really want to learn from. No? Whether you use kahit anong tool actually. Eh. Basta presentation yung ginagawa mo. The, the message of Sir Pat a while ago how to actually work with a visual, you know, do a visual, and how to process eh. Yung process ng pagbuo ng visual, hindi siya basta, um, o oh, sige, de-designan ko lang para meron akong visual. Hindi eh. Kasama siya sa pagplano mo kung paano mo siya ilalatag sa lesson. So I think it's very, very um, important, no? Para ma-engage mo rin ang students mo. Galing! Correct, no? Teacher Pao, ito yung sabi natin na ano, ang dami ng ginagawa ng mga teachers natin, okay? At um, ang ginawa ni Canva is to take away, no, that that aspect, no, ng pagdidesign pa ng mga instructional materials, okay? Without necessarily, ano, no, sacrificing the design, okay? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, sabi nga ni Teacher Pat kayo na, no, you can actually create a design in like 5, 10 minutes, tapos mo na yung design presentation mo, lalagyan mo na lang ng content, no? So that our teachers could actually focus Mm -hmm. Yes, we to teach. Kasi naman talaga ang ano natin, okay? Para yung mga ibang aspect na like designing, si Canva na bahala dyan. Okay? Yes, At yes. Uh, ano, no? At ang maganda, teacher Pauno, itong si Canva, continuously growing. Talaga hindi sila tumitigil mag-add ano, mag ng yes. features, mag-add ng assets, etc. Imagine, teacher Pau, it's, kanina nakalagay is 30 million, if I'm not mistaken, no? uh, or 3 million as uh, templates. Wow. At um, yes, ganun kadami no yung assets na nabu 30 or 3 or 3 30 million. <laughs> Sobrang dami ng uh, can buy for free no na pwedeng gamitin ng mga teachers natin. Okay? Pero teacher so, yan, Franco, okay, so I think uh, yan, teacher Franco, I'm sure kinilig ka talaga no nakita ko yung history. Sir Franco yung nadikit dun sa ano ko sa screen ko eh. Yun talaga yun eh. Sabi ko kinikilig to for sure. Ang dami yung template pang history. Alam mo yun. ba? Yes. So alam, alam yan. 
At hindi oh. tayo mahirap pa maghanap, no? Kasi napakahirap hanapin yan. Yung mga sarap. Hanap ka ng customized, ano, mga assets sa sa yes. Google, sa Google o kay Google Search. Yes. Ang hirap. Kasi yung iba may mga bayad, may license, no? Hindi mo ma-download. No? Pero imagine that, okay? Free for all teachers na talagang pwede mo i-download, gamitin, etc. And again, sabi ko kanina, no? Uh, life is so much better and easier with Canva. Mas pinadali na, okay? Again. Yan, Teacher Tony, if that, yeah, if that happens, paki-email uh, lang po kami sa administrator at kaagapayph.com. Yeah. Yes, uh, Teacher Varda and Blessings, okay? uh, let me type that again. <laughs> Although I already <laughs> typed that, okay? Nakabuna na ata. Yes. Oh, oh. Pero ang galing-galing ng session na to. Kaya kung kung medyo hindi kayo okay. um, umabot no, yung mga pauwi pa lang, yung pumunta sa labas, sure ball team replay kasama niyo ko doon para makuha ko yung bumbong <laughs> webinar. Yes. Don't worry no kasi hanggang Monday naman ang ating evaluation. We always extend because we know how busy our teachers are, no? Okay, so no, hang, tama, no? hanggang Monday naman, okay? Um, kasi sa, ano, no, um, araw ng kalayaan sa, sa Saturday. Yeah. So, dapat, huwag naman tayong mag-webinar teachers noon. Uh, palayain natin muna ang ating mga sarili no, sa mga ganong klase ng gawain para makapagpahinga talaga tayo. No? So, teachers, no, by the way, huwag natin po kalimutan na mag-webinar pag Saturday with KTS. Wala po tayong webinar on Saturday, no? That's uh, a rest day for all of us. That's a time for us to rest, okay, magpahinga, maging malaya no, sa araw na yun. Okay? I think sa teacher pa, no, okay na tayo. Nakapag-evaluate ng mga teachers natin. Yep. So again, teachers, yep. maraming maraming salamat for joining us today. Uh, we always no, um, um, uh, see to it na we get to provide you all the these, um, these tools, these uh, opportunities no, for you to learn. But again, as always, we remind, okay? kayo pa rin ang pipili. So choose your tools, okay? choose your playlist. Okay? Um, I know, for example, no, we always make uh, Teacher Pao an example because Teacher Pao is like overwhelmed. <laughs> this is so many choices that she has to make. But again, at the bottom, ang bottom line ng teachers that you will have to make the choice still. No? Kayo pa rin po magde-decide which one you're going to use among these many tools that we're presenting. Yes. Teacher Pao, any message? Keep learning. Let's not stop. <laughs> Keep learning. Everyone. Short and powerful. Okay. Maraming yeah. salamat, Teacher Pao. No, pahinga ka na, Teacher Pao. Para, para kailangan mo na ng pahinga. No? Maraming maraming salamat again, teachers. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Huwag pong kakalimutan. Bukas po tayo may session, not on Saturday. We'll see you for our first uh, Ed Puzzle webinar tomorrow.